Hello, good evening, God bless you. You are all welcome to another edition of the Prophetic Hour. We bless the holy name of God. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And this God begin to do wonders and great things, even in your lives and destinies, in the name of Jesus. You are not watching by accident, but by divine appointment. And we know that this is your season. This is your moment. This is your hour for a great breakthrough. And God himself will come through for you like never before in the name of Jesus. So put your mind at rest. Jehovah God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work even in your lives and destinies. Thank you for all those who have been waiting for us to come on while the intro was playing. God will bless, honor you, increase and prosper you. And you shall arise and shine, succeed and make it marvelously and mightily in the name of So we are so excited to be able to come through this medium to talk to you and touch you and we know that the Lord will touch you like never before. My name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Body of Christ Center, a church I pass my wife, Pastor Funke, is a church where Christ himself reigns supreme and lives are touched and changed and transformed. And guess what? You watching is not by accident, it is by divine appointment. It is by divine appointment. And God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives in the name of Jesus. I hear this voice loud and clear that your glory that has been stolen has been restored. Your stolen glory has been restored. If you believe that and you accept that, just type it out. My glory has been restored. My glory has been restored. Happy new month, the ninth month of this year. We bless the holy name of God. Thank you all, and we thank God, we bless God for giving us the grace to be alive, and thank you all for those who have been supporting this program throughout this year from January. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. We say a big thanks to you, a big appreciation to you, and a big God love you to you, and God bless you for sharing, for tuning in, for commenting, for everything you have done in this program. God will bless, honor, and increase, and prosper you, and you will continue to arise and shine, prosper, and succeed marvelously and mightily in the name of Jesus. So you are welcome once again to this prophetic hour where you receive words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. Words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. As you know, we are on as you know, we are on two platforms. We are on two platforms as you can see. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook. That is our Facebook address. All those who are watching us via Facebook, please kindly share to all your friends on their timeline and also share amongst your own Facebook page and also share within the groups you belong to and God will bless you. So share on your timeline, share within your Facebook page and also share within the groups you belong to and God will bless, honor and increase and prosper you. And also send the links to your friends out there and we are also on YouTube. That is our YouTube address. It's just one word and God will bless you. You can send the link we send to you, send it to them and once they press on that link, either on YouTube or Facebook, it brings them into the live program. So make sure you share and God will bless you as you begin to share in the name of Jesus. Let's get sharing, 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 sharing. God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work even in every life in the name of Jesus and God will bless you. Once again, happy new month. Can everyone greet somebody on this platform? Happy new month. Happy new month. It's the ninth month. And we know that God will be honored even in our lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. So you are all welcome, welcome, welcome. And don't forget that um, we are back in church. We are back. But before then, if you want to know more about myself or Pastor Funke, that is our website, as you can see on the screen. That's our website, our website on the screen. Make sure you visit our website. And when you visit, make sure you go. If you want to know how to come to church, the address is there. Just click on contact and go to direction. I want to know how to get to church and God will bless you. And also, this is our address, as you can see on the screen. That's our church address. Make sure you also come Sundays at 10 a.m. I believe that the Lord will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. You continue to arise and shine, prosper and succeed mightily. And marvelous for those who are joining us for the, for the very first time we have this program airing every tuesday at 9 p.m every tuesday at 9 p.m. that's the prophetic hour where you receive words that would encourage your soul and lift up your spirit words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit i see the hand of god lifting somebody up i see that hand lifting somebody up <coughs> excuse me if you want god to lift you up tap it out lift me up oh lord Lift me up, O oh Lord. Lift me up, O oh Lord. I see that hand. Lifting people up. 
lifting people up. If you want God to lift you up, say, I, I Lord, lift me up, O Lord. And God will begin to lift you and work His wonders and miracles even in your lives. And so let's get sharing. Let's get sharing. God is going to work wonders today for you and I, marvelously and mightily in the name of Jesus. So once again, you are welcome to this prophetic hour where you receive words that will encourage your soul and lift up your speech. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor, marvelous King. I accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. There's none like unto you. There's none besides you. There's none we can compare unto you. El Shaddai, Jehovah Nisi, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Mighty Father, we come before you today. Gather with us. Have your will. Prove yourself in our lives and destinies. We come against every evil work of the enemy and we destroy, we bind, we cast into hell in the name of Jesus. We declare and declare, Lord, come down into our midst. Have your way. Do a new work. Come down with your power. Come down with your grace. Come down with your glory. Come down with everything, Mighty Father, and touch every soul. Touch every individual that is watching tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. Honored and praised. And mighty Father, we thank you, we bless you, glorify you. We cover the goddess, this, this program with the blood of Jesus. We cover the connection, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. As I prayed just now, I saw a finger. I saw a finger. I said, What is this? And I saw a finger touching people who are watching, touching people. I said, What is this, God? And God says, That is his finger of miracle. Now, if one got to touch you with his finger of miracle, just tap it out. Finger of miracle finger of miracle and God himself will touch you like now before that's a finger of miracle and God will touch you with the finger of miracle and your life shall never remain the same again and God will bless you for those who are on YouTube I want to see your comment on YouTube make sure you make a comment on YouTube I said we are on both YouTube and Facebook so make sure you leave comments and we can read and see your comments on both platforms both on YouTube and Facebook and God will begin to work His wonders and miracles, even in every life and destiny, in the name of Jesus. We believe and we know that you continue to arise and shine, prosper and succeed, and you shall succeed marvelously and mightily in the name of Jesus. The plan and purpose of God for your lives shall come to pass, and it shall be fulfilled mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. This is your season to succeed and make it, and you shall make it. As you know, we have been talking about the right direction the right direction. I see angels distributing package. I see angels distributing package. I'm supposed to this and God says these are the blessings it has for us in the month of September. These are the blessings it has for us in the month of September. Now if you want the angel to do to, to drop or deposit that passage in that package in your house, just tap it out. Package. That's all. Package. Package. And so tap that word package out Guess what? The angel of God will drop that which God has assigned for you and planned for you in the ninth month of this year. Just tap it at package. And I see that package being dropped. I see the angels of God tap it, dropping the package, dropping the package, and God will bless you. Please, let's get sharing. Let's get as many people as possible, even on board, and God will bless everyone mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Let's get everyone on board. So those who have not seen, make sure you share, share, share. Call them, email them, WhatsApp them, text them, Send the tweets to them. You know what? Use every device. Even Facebook them. Let them know that um, prophetic hour is going on right now. And God will bless every individual in the name of Jesus. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And this thing God will begin to work wonders and miracles even in your life. There's somebody that's watching. God is telling me. You are watching. You thought and you believed. You had that great faith. That what has been wrong with you, what has been pursuing you, what has gone wrong in your life, that challenge would have ended with the month of August. But it looks as if it's following you into the month of September. It looks as if it's still following you in the month of September. But I hear God say, enough is enough. If that is you, tap it out. Enough is enough. Full stop. Enough is enough. Full stop. Tap it out. Enough is enough. Full stop. When you type that out, God will put a stop to that challenge or that worry or that problem that followed you into the month of September. And I'm telling you that before the end of September, you shall see it no more. I say one thing, before the end of September, you shall see it no more. Enough is enough. Full stop. Enough is enough. Full stop. And God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work for you and for every one of us in Jesus. Once again, you are all welcome to this program and the prophetic hour where you receive words that will encourage your soul and lift up your spirit. There's somebody that's watching. There's somebody that's watching. You are somebody forced somebody forced food in your mouth, into your mouth, in your dream. 
You don't want to eat it, but they forced it into your mouth in your dream. And you ate it and you woke up. And you've been feeling very funny. You've been feeling very funny. I see the fire of God consuming that demonic deposit in your destiny. I see the fire of God. I see fire of God consuming. I see fire of God consuming. If that is you, just type it out. Fire of God consuming. Fire, they forcefully fed you in your dream. You did not want to eat, but they forcefully fed you. Just type it out. Fire of God consume it. Fire of God consume. And what you have ate, what you ate in your dream will be consumed by fire, and you will no longer feel any. You will no longer feel funny anymore. God will put you back to normal and the way you're supposed to be, and will destroy. Because you know what I've got to say. I am a consuming fire, and God will consume fire, 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 fire right now in the name of Jesus. This is your season. This is your moment. Please let's share, share, share. Let's get sharing. Let's get sharing. Let's get sharing. And God will bless, increase, and prosper all in the name of Jesus. Invite your friends and God will bless you. Now, as you know, we are going into the word of God. If you have your Bibles, you can open your Bibles to the book of open your Bibles to the book of John. John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. John chapter 5. Verses 1 to 9. The God we are serving is a mighty God. I say once again, the God we are serving is a mighty God. And this same God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work even in your destiny and in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I hear God say, the missed opportunity has been re regained. The missed opportunity has been regained. The missed opportunity has been regained. Now, if you have, if you missed an opportunity, a golden opportunity, and you wanted to come back, just tap regained, regained, tap it out, regained. As that are regained, the angels of God will orchestrate and put that and place that opportunity before you again, and make sure you grab it with both hands. Just tap regained. That missed opportunity has been regained. Why? Because you are watching and God has favored you. God has decided to favor you. So that missed opportunity has been regained. So definitely put your mind at rest. Jehovah God is in control and God begins to work his wonders and miracles even in our lives in Jesus. So the book of John, the book of John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. The book of John chapter 5. Verses 1 to 9. I believe you are there already. And let's read book of John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. And the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, verses 5, 1 to 2, here, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and just went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of halt, of other folk, of blind halt, with that waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Verse, um, verse 5 and 6, and the Bible says, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been there now a long time, in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Verse 7 of John chapter 5 says, And the, the important man Answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. While I am coming, another step it down before me. Father, we thank and we bless you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. As I go into your word, go with us, speak to us. Let your name be glorified. Touch us like never before. Holy Ghost, have your way, prove yourself, and do a new work. Touch us and open our understanding. Father, we honor and we bless you. We praise and we adore you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. I know and I believe that this is your season to arise and shine. And you will prosper and you will arise, you will shine, you will succeed in the name of Jesus. Thank you. I see a big book and I see names being written in it. So what are these names, Lord? And God says that 
in the last four months. These are the names. He, 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 these are the names of the names of people who are written are the names that he wants to bless in the last four months of this year. September, October, November, December. He wants to bless them in the last four months of this year. I said, Lord, how can we add our name to it? And God says, we should just type it out. Remember me for good. Remember me for good, O Lord. Remember me for good. God says, as you type that word out, remember me for good, our names will be added to that book that he has, that is a list of those whom he wants to bless in September, October, November, and December. The last four months of this year, there's going to be a great outpouring of blessings and of power and of greatness. If you want to be part of it, just type it up. Remember me for good. And God says he will remember us for good like never before in the name of Jesus. I hear him say he will remember us for good like never before in the name of Jesus. And God will be. So let's get sharing. Let's get as many people as possible on board. Let them come. Tell them to come. Because I know that Jehovah God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work, even in every life and destiny, in the name of Jesus. Remember me for good, O oh Lord. Remember me for good, and this same God will begin to remember us for good, mightily and marvelously, in the name of Jesus. We continue with our topic, Right Direction. This is part 15. We bless the holy name of God. Now, if you are just, if you are just joining us for the very first time, don't worry. If you have missed any of the parts, because I from part 1, and this is part 15, so I've been doing it for almost 14 weeks. Today is the 15th week, and we bless the holy name of God. So, we want you to, if you have missed any, don't worry, you can go to our Facebook page or YouTube channel. If it's Facebook page, when you get on our Facebook page, click on videos and scroll down to right direction, and you can see parts 1 to 13 there, I believe. Or 14, verse 1 to 14, and then if you go to YouTube also, our YouTube channel, click on playlist, and then you click on um, prophetic hour, no, recovery, um, right direction, sorry, right direction, click on right direction, and then you can see parts 1 to 14 there also, and God will bless you and work wonders. I can see that God is remembering everybody for good. As you type it out, guess what? You remember every one of us for good, and our life shall never remain the same again. So, how do we get to the right direction? I'll just speed up on this. I can spend more time on the 15th point, and God will bless us. How do we access the right direction? Number one, as I said before, you must, after this, there's always an after this, and I declare that after this program, after this season, a great thing will take place in our lives in the name of Jesus. And number two, celebration. For each point, I will be declaring a blessing. And if you want it, just say amen or I receive it. No, type I receive it. I receive it, not amen. Type I receive it. So there's going to be a great blessing for everyone watching after this season right now in the name of Jesus. Number two, you watching, you shall be celebrated in the name of Jesus. I declare you shall be celebrated. Point three, go up. As you go up, as you arise, as you sleep tonight, and you wake up tomorrow and you go up. You will encounter your destiny helper. I declare and I decree and so in the name of Jesus. Number four, your discovery. These are points. If you want to know more, as I said before, if you want to know more, you can go to our Facebook page or you can go to our YouTube and you can know more about all these points. We will talk on it elaborately. On but this time around, I'm just moving on. Five. I declare number four, your discovery. I declare and decree. Because we are watching, you begin to discover great things in your lives and destinies. In them. The hidden things, you will discover everything in the name of Jesus. And number five, number five, number five is, sorry, number five is no exception. No exception. I declare and decree, whatever the enemy has placed you, you are coming out. I say you are coming out. By fire, by power, you are coming out. And number six, number six Number six is certain season. Because you are watching this program, I declare your season has come. I say once again, your season has come. The fact that you are watching this program and you have shared to your friend, I declare your season has come. Even right now in the name of Jesus. I declare, begin to enjoy your season. I say once again, begin to enjoy your season in the name of Jesus. And number eight, your angel. I send forth your, everyone watching me, I send forth your angel 
to go and recover every stolen blessing. I send forth our angels, your angel, my angel, every angel out there. I send them forth for those who are watching to go out and recover every stolen blessing in the name of Jesus. Remember, it's I receive it. And God will bless you and work one last. And then number eight. Number eight, I'll be number eight, the troubler. Hmm. I declare today, your troubler has been silenced. I say once again, your troubler has been silenced. I say for the very first last time, your troubler has been silenced. These are the points we are talking about how to get to the right direction. And I believe the Lord will work wonders and miracles in every life in Jesus' name. And number nine, progress report. Because you are watching as on today, progress is your portion. Anywhere you turn to, you shall encounter unusual progress. The report you will have shall be unusual report and unusual progress. At your place of work, in your family, anywhere you go to, you shall encounter unusual progress in the name of Jesus. And then number 10, yes, take for miracles. I declare that miracle that no one knows how it came about will take place in your lives. That miracle that is unexplainable. I declare and decree will take place in your life and destinies, even right now, in the name of Jesus. Remember, it is I receive, I receive it because as I'm declaring it, begin to receive it. And as you receive it, guess what? There will be a performance and an encounter in your life and destiny in the name of Jesus. And then, number 11, 11, fight for your destiny. I declare and decree as you begin to go out and battle either in your, in your prayers, either in your dreams, either through the word of God, in any form or any way, as you go out and fight for your destiny, you will conquer. I declare and decree you would conquer. You will always conquer in the name of Jesus. I declare, <coughs> excuse me, you are a conqueror in the name of Jesus. And God begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Remember, it is I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. Number 12, divine location. Right where you are, I declare and decree that the Lord will divinely locate you. I say once again, the creator of heaven and earth, the Lord of heaven and earth, because you are watching, I declare and decree right where you are, where you are seated, or where you are walking, or where you are moving, I declare divine location has located you. Can I use that word? God has divinely located you by fire and by power in the name of Jesus. Number 13, talking about, you know, these are the points we spoke about while we are doing this program. Number 13 is right response. Hmm. I declare today that the Holy Spirit will always make you speak and say the right answer. Speak and say and give the right response. Wherever you go to us from now on, the right answer, the right response will come forth from your mouth, even right now in the name of the, I declare it, I decree it, and it is so. You will not speak the wrong answer. You will not answer wrongly, but you will answer and speak correctly and rightly from now on in the name of Jesus. I declare it, I de and it is so. I shall receive it. I declare this. So I see this as you are typing out. I receive it. Yes, I see the angel of God putting a stamp, a seal on it. That it is done. It is done. It is done. Number fourteen. Number fourteen. Helper. Hmm. Everyone needs a helper. Every man and woman, boy or girl, young and old, we all need a helper. I declare because you are watching, because you are watching, because you are watching, your helper has located you. Mm. What has blocked your helper? What has stopped your helper? Helper has been removed by fire and authority in the name of Jesus. I say once again, it has been removed by fire and authority in the name of Jesus. I say once again, it has been removed by fire and authority. And because it has been removed, your helper will locate you. Your helper has located you. And your helper is in action. And your helper will carry out that assignment without getting weary or tired. Your helper will not leave you until they finish the assignment that God has sent them to do, even in your life and destiny right now in the name of Jesus. For seven people, we now finish it, that's point 14. So for seven people who are watching, I see their helper standing next to them. For seven people, I see your helper, my own helper. I see our help. Let me do what ah, I see our helpers standing next to us. Now, if you believe you are amongst the seven people, just tell me that I have been located. I have been located. I have been located. I have 
being located. Guess what? God has located me by fire and by authority in the name of Jesus. So we thank God. God is working wonders and God is working miracles. And a new thing and a great thing is going to take place. I see a hand removing like a, a blemish in the eye of somebody. In the two eyes. And what is this God? And God says that what the enemy has used to block them like a blindfold. For them not to see their opportunities, for them not to see their vision and goals and dreams, for them not to be able to move forward, God says he has removed it. If that is you, thus tap it and it has been removed. God says he has removed it. That blockage, that hindrance, whatever the air, whatever whatever the enemy has put in your eyes to block your vision from seeing your opportunity, from seeing your dreams, from achieving your destiny, from knowing where you are going, from, from, from that has prevented you from seeing the right direction, it has been removed. I see that hand removing it. It has been removed. It has been removed. It has been removed. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, worship you, praise, adore you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Right now, today, we are going on. As I said before, if you have missed any of it, you can go to our website, sorry, you can go to our YouTube page or Facebook page and begin to watch it and go with it. Today we are going on one-way traffic solution. One-way traffic or solution. So it's one-way traffic or one-way solution. What do we mean by this? Father, we thank you. As I go into what God will just speak to us, touch us, Lord. Let your name be glorified. Give us great understanding. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray it is well with our soul i declare once again it is well with your soul one way traffic now the bible says in verse um john chapter 5 verse verse 3 verse 3 john 5 3 says in this lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind horse withered waiting for the moving of the water now, verse 7 says, the important, man answered, the important man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step it down before me. Now, when you look at all these people, all this multitude, they were waiting for a one-way solution. They were waiting for a one-way, they were like a one-way direction, one-way traffic. That is, and if care is not taken, many people are stereotyped into believing that there's only one way that God can work a miracle. It's only one way that God can deliver you. God can deliver you when you pray and fast, yes. God can deliver you when you sow a seed, yes. God can deliver you when you lay on his altar, yes. God can deliver you when you cry out, yes. So God, it doesn't mean that God has only one way. You cannot now tell me that it's only through prayer and fasting that God can deliver you. You cannot now tell me that it's only through sowing that God can deliver you. You cannot tell me that it's only when you lay your, 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 yourself down on the altar that God will deliver you. You cannot tell me that it's only by praising God. God has many ways. But you see, if care is not taken, as Christians, we tend to stereotype God. So the question tonight is that, are you stereotyping God or are you flowing in His will? Are you stereotyping God or are you flowing in His will? The people here, they had one way solution. I think it is by the moving of the water, by the angel of God, that they will be healed. And that was why, when you look at it very, very well, the Bible says that Jesus came there. Jesus Located the man. Now, I know there were blind people there, but those who were halt, those who were withered, those who were impotent folks, they at least they could see. It's only the blind that could not see. Now, what stopped them? Jesus came there. Everyone would have known this man because I know that I believe that this man has been there for a long time 38 years. This man has been there for 38 years. Now, this man, Christ came in and gave him a word, and the man took up his palette. And walked. Now, what stopped the impotent folk? Let's leave the blind because they may not see. But the impotent folk, the hurt and the widow, from crying out to Jesus, deliver us. If you could deliver this man who has been here for 38 years. They, somebody who have been there for one year, five years, ten years. Yes, but this man, I believe it was the longest one there. That was why like Jesus located him. And the Bible says that he took up his pallet and walked in, from their midst. They saw the man walk. None of them could open their mouth and ask him, how were you healed? What happened to you? All their focus was on the water. Jesus came in and he left. Only one man was healed amongst the multitude. Only one man. You see, as Christians, we should not stereotype God. 
believe that God has a certain way to deliver. God can deliver in any way and in any form. God, I repeat that. God can deliver in any way and any form. Stop stereotyping God. Don't believe that if God doesn't do it this way, then he cannot do it at all. We need to enlarge our faith. We need to increase our faith. We need to put our faith in action. And the only way we can do that is by believing that God has many ways. He said, my ways are not your ways. As far as the heaven is far from the earth, so are my thoughts uh, uh, different from yours. So you see, we need to flow in the will of God. How can Jesus come in? And much to do are healed. And it was the only one man. And the Bible has told us before in Matthew that multitude came and they were all healed. All the multitude were healed. So it means that Jesus could have healed the multitude. But because they kept on focusing on the pool, they kept on focusing on the on the moving of the water, and the man passed them by, Jesus passed them by, and none of them could call Jesus or touch the hem of his garment or believe in faith or shout like Bartimaeus did. Shout! He shouted, and guess what? Christ located him. That's why you see, you need to enlarge your mind, enlarge your thinking, enlarge your your your, your focus. Stop stereotyping God. Believe that God is a God of one way. God is a God of multi ways. God is a God that can do and undo. God is a God that can deliver and set free. Now, when you look at God, the way he blessed Abraham was different from the way he blessed Isaac. The way he blessed Isaac was different from the way he blessed Jacob. Now, Jacob, Joseph could have said, okay, my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father, they were blessed this way. So I try to bless this way. But no, his blessing was in a different form and different way. Why? Because he did not stereotype God. And that's why you see, we will not look at Solomon. Solomon was the son of David. David fought wars and he fought and fought and fought. But when it came to the turn of Solomon, he fought no war. God gave him peace so he could build whatever he wanted to build. And guess what? Solomon could have said that, look, my father fight, fought wars. Let me go and fight wars. Let me stereotype God and go and fight. But he, he, he had a different life. He had a different belief. He had a different trust. He had a different focus on God. What am I saying tonight? That we need to open up our mind. Let Don't stereotype God. God can work in diverse ways. God can work in a miraculous way. God can work and deliver. Look at Paul. When you look at Paul and Peter, the way that God called Peter is different from the way that God called, God called Saul. It's very different. You can say that God did not call Saul. Why? Because he wasn't called by the river. He wasn't a fisherman. You see? And that's stereotyping God. We need to let God have his way in our lives. Somebody type that out. We need to let God have his way. We need to let God have his way in our lives. Stop stereotyping God. Don't say, uh -huh. I know that if I, for example, let's use sin. Now people will say they will sin. If I sin now, uh -huh, I will go and meet God and I fast three days, fast seven days, I go on the mountain and God will hear me. That is, that is stereotyping God because you thought you, do, you did it last time and God says forgiving you. Now you are turning it to stereotyping. We should not stereotype God. Even we should not sin at all. That's what we should not sin at all. But why do we need to, if you want to fast, you fast for power, for empowerment, for increase, for, for to know God the more, and for God to wrath, wrath a miracle in your life and death. What am I talking about today? One-way traffic. Don't have a one-way traffic with God. Make sure you have a diverse way. For example, now, you are in the motorway. I'm talking about England now, UK. You are in the motorway. You want to go, for example, to Scotland now. You, <laughs> there, are, there are many routes you can take to Scotland. You can take the M1, you can take the A A1M, you can take the M6, you can take all this, you can take the M52 to get to Scotland. But if you now say it's only one way, you know, it may even take long, you may take longer routes. What am I saying? Stop stereotyping God. Believe God. Trust God. God has many ways where we don't have a way. Many times we think that if God doesn't do it the way I am thinking, 
then God has not done it at all. And why? Because we are restricting our thoughts, we are restricting our, our vision, we are restricting our dreams to one-way God. Our God is not a one-way God. Our God is a God of diversity. That's why you see, God can use people in different ways. Some people, God can use them with olive oil, yes. Some people, God can use them with water, yes. So the person using olive oil should not condemn and judge that those who are using water, they are the wrong. That person is stereotyping God. You cannot stereotype. No one, let me tell you something. No one owns God. Let's talk about that. No one owns God. You do not own God. God is the one that owns us. So people deal in this world as if they own God. No one owes, owns God. You cannot own God. And that's why you cannot control the things that God wants to do for an individual or even in your life. Stop stereotyping God. These people, they thought that, okay, hmm, it's only one way. And they lost out. And the reason is that when people begin to stereotype God, guess what? They cannot look beyond their nose. If God does not do it the way they think he should do it, then it's no way at all. I repeat that if God does not do it the way he should do it, there's no way at all. And that's why you see, even in the beginning, when the church started, those who were Christians, who were Pharisees, they were saying in those days that if they don't circumcise, they don't belong to Christ. And they don't belong, and they, 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 they're, not, they're not fully a, a fold of the family of Christ. And there arose a great argument. They had to go to the, to the council in Jerusalem and they said it out that, look, as long as they are born again, as long as they accept Jesus, as long as they don't become idol worshippers, as long as they don't eat things, sacrifice to idols, then let's leave them alone. Why? Because people were trying to stereotype them that, look, if you are not circumcised, you are not going to heaven. And you see, even in our world of today, people still do it. They stereotype, they try to stereotype the things that God can do. And if you are, if you are somebody that stereotypes God, guess what? That person will not be able to discover the right direction. Why am I saying this? Because we need to discover the right direction. I say again, we need to discover the right direction. And it's only people of those who have an open mind that can discover God. And the question is that, have you discovered God? Have you discovered God? You know, somebody was preaching and said that God is like an... I'm just analogy. I'm not saying God is, but God, we can represent God. We can say that God is like an elephant, and I will tell you the reason why I'm saying that. Some people will touch the air, some will touch the tail, some will touch the leg, some will touch the abdomen, and they will say, "Ah, God is flat." Some people will say, "Ah, God is long like a tail." Some will say, "God is very fat." It's because that is their own experience or revelation regarding God. God is a God of many parts, and you see, no one can know God fully. No one can know God all. You cannot know, you cannot know all the parts of God. We cannot know all the wonders of God. We can only know in parts. We can only know in parts. And we can only know what the Holy Spirit will reveal to us. In a nutshell, what am I saying? That do not stereotype God. Desist from stereotyping God. Have an open mind when it comes to Christendom. Have an open mind. I know there are rules and regulations and the rules and regulations are in the Bible, yes. Anything outside the Bible, yes, you can throw it away. But as long as it's within the Bible, guess what? Let's follow the word of God. Stop, and you see, stop stereotyping God. One-way traffic, one-way solution. One-way traffic, one-way solution. Are you stereotyping God or are you flowing into His will? That is the question tonight. Are you flowing into the will of God? Because the most important thing is for you and I to flow into the will of God. You and I to hand over things to God. You and I to do the things that God wants us to do. Guess what? It is God that instructs us. It is God that will instruct us. We don't instruct God. So people talk as if they are the ones instructing God. They talk as if God and them sat down. To have a meeting and decide what ne the, the world needs to do the next time. I'm not saying that people cannot communicate with God, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying that some people say categorically, if it's not my way, it's no way. Nobody, when it comes to God, nobody has the full way. Everybody is coming different ways to come towards this God as God will reveal to every individual. May God reveal Himself to you and I. That is the question. May God reveal Himself to you. And I, everyone has a way that God will reveal to them that they will be able to excel in the right direction. May you discover that way.
That's the prayer. Lord, may you discover the way you have for me. Many a times, many Christians are so are so occupied by looking at somebody else's way and what they are doing. But what are we supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Focus on your lane. Focus on where God is taking to you. Focus to hear from God. Focus to know the things of God. And when you focus, guess what? God will lead you the right way and you will not stereotype God. Don't be a Christian that stereotypes God. Don't be a Christian that says, Ahem, if you go to a prayer meeting and, and they don't lay hands on you, then you're not receive the blessing. Why they lay hands on you? Not, guess what? Right where you are in the meeting, if it's God's own meeting, guess what? He will touch you there. Some people will say that, ah, I went to a meeting, but they didn't lay hands on me. And because they didn't lay hands on them, they'll be so sad, so down. It doesn't matter. That's stereotyping God. Right where you are, if man cannot lay hands on you, guess what? God himself will lay hands on you. God himself will lay hands on you. It's God that does the miracle, not man. Not man that does the miracle. I'm not saying that neglect the men and women. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if you go to a big crusade or a big program and there is not that opportunity for hands to be laid on you, don't go home sad or saddened. Go home rejoicing because right where you are, the Holy Spirit has laid hands on you and guess what? You will receive your miracle. What am I saying is, we need to be open-hearted. We need to receive what God has given to us. Because many Christians are sad for nothing. Many Christians are downcast for nothing. They are thinking that because it not happened the way... Remember, let me tell you something. In those days when I was young, in those when I was young, when I was very, very young, I mean, I became a Christian when I was young, and I went to this church, my parents would go to this church, and every time people... This is talking about stereotyping God. Anytime people receive the Holy Ghost. I think it's because of what is in there. I didn't understand them. They will knock their hair, head on the chair. They will fall down. They will roll and they will do all that. So I began to ask for the Holy Ghost. And every time I went to service, I would expect myself to fall down, to knock my head on the chair, to do all that, all those gymnastics. You understand? That is the way I believe is the spirit in them that's trying to receive the Holy Ghost. That's why they were reacting that way. And guess what? Each time I would go home, I would be sad. There was even a time, I can never forget, my parents came to me because they saw I was sad. And they asked me, why was wrong with I said that? Because I want to receive the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is not coming. And, and because I'm not falling. And they said, no, it doesn't happen that way. But as I began to grow, I now understood that you don't need to fall for the Holy Ghost to come upon you. Because that was how, where I, that, the environment where I was, that's what I understood. That for you to know you hear the Holy Ghost, you have to fall, you have to knock your head, you have to go from A to Z. Sometimes they have to hold some people and they will be shaking and shaking. So I was expecting that to happen to me, but it didn't happen because I was stereotyping God. But when I had an open mind, just kneeling down and raising my hands, guess what? I received the Holy Ghost in peace. I did not fall down, I did not shake, I just began to speak in tongues and that was it. So why didn't I quickly receive the Holy Ghost then? Because I was stereotyping God. Say, God, let me fall. And I was praying that, Lord, let me fall. Let me hit my head. Let me somersault. Let me roll the pulley or whatever they call it. Let people hold me. Because that was the way I thought. And that's how many Christians do. They stereotype God. Okay, so people come to church. I felt the Spirit of God. He moved through me. Hallelujah. I can feel. And you say, oh, they will be, oh. And then you, who are there, you're not doing anything. And you begin to feel sad. Look, when will I feel your spirit? Not knowing that the spirit is already inside of you. God determines how he deals with individuals. You need to discover the way that God deals with you. Once you discover the way that God deals with you, guess what? You will be at peace. So we say that God did not touch me. Ah, God touched that man. He felt it. That woman felt it. I can see how they are doing Holy Ghost. That I can see how they are shaking their hands, their heads, everything. I can see, I can see the fire on, of God on them. But them, nothing happens to them. And they go home sad, thinking that God has not, not knowing that God has actually touched them. What am I saying? Stop stereotyping God. Stop stereotyping God. This is what these people did. One way traffic. Because Jesus did not come to move the water, they lost their miracle. And only one man out of the multitude was saved and he walked out of their midst and took off his pallet and walked and everybody saw him. Uh, Why the clap? We don't know. But guess what? They not even touch Jesus. They not ask the man how he got healed. Why? Because they were still focused on the water. My question tonight is that are you still focused on the water? Are you still focused on the water moving or are you focused on Jesus? The Bible says that let our focus 
be on Jesus, seated at the right hand of God. That should we, that should be the place where our focus should be. When our focus is above where Christ is, guess what? We will not see what is happening around us. We will not see what is taking place around us. Why? Because we are focused on Jesus. But when you begin to look around, you will lose focus. May we not lose focus. I say once again, may we not lose focus. Type it out. I will not lose my focus. Type it out. I will not lose my focus. I will not lose my focus. This focus goes a long way. And that's why you see, we need not to stereotype God. God is a God of multi-wave. And I use that. Where we have no way, God has millions of ways by which he can do things. And God will do things in his way. Don't stereotype God. Trust this God. Believe this God. Know this God. And discover. Remember, discover your way with God. Discover your way with God. And I believe when you discover your way with God, you will recover. When you, dis- There's some other other. When you discover your way with God, you will recover. Let me repeat that. And someone type it out, please. When you discover your way with God, you will recover. I say again, when you discover your way with God, you will recover. Stop stereotyping God. God is a God of many ways. Don't be a Christian that stereotypes God. That if you don't dance dance a certain way, then your dancing is not acceptable. If you don't jump a certain way, your jumping is not acceptable. If you don't clap a certain way, if you, you can see me that if you clap this way, if you clap that way, if you clap that way, it's only if you clap this way. Don't stereotype God. Many times there are little things that we do that we stereotype God, thinking that because the person is not doing it in the standard way that you and you and I think it is, then it's not acceptable. Who told you that? Guess what? It was after the service had ended that Anna went to pray on the altar. She did not pray on the altar during the service. She did not pray before the service. She prayed after the service. And guess what? God still had her. Why is she praying after the service? Even the man of God was saying, why are you praying after the service? Service is over. You drunken woman. Who want to bail her? Go away. Because the man even stereotyped, stereotyped uh, Anna that when you want to pray, number one, you make noise. He was looking at the woman, and that's even a good example. He was looking at the woman, Hannah, that this woman is praying. She's not, no voice is coming out. You cannot hear her voice. She's praying, she's weeping. Ah, she must be a drunk. You know, many times we church people, let me church people, including myself, we stereotype people. Because somebody's not jumping up the way they're supposed to jump up. Ah, that person must be a sinner. That person doesn't know God. That person doesn't understand God. Because the person is not sitting properly. Ah, that person is a worse sinner. Who told you that? Stop stereotyping God. Let's leave things in God's hands. And guess what? Let us discover our own way. When we discover our own way, guess what? We recover. When we discover our own way with God, guess what? You and I will recover. One way traffic. One way solution. Let's leave the one way traffic and go beyond dual way traffic. You know there's a motorways that has eight lanes in one way. Now, let's go on lanes that are beyond eight ways, knowing that God can do anything. God, we can move from one lane to the other, one lane to the other. Guess what? When, for example, when they are doing relay, especially 400 relay, 400 relay, you know what? After a while, after they do the first round, they do the first round in their lane. Guess what? After the next round, they do it, they, everybody falls uh, and they just be in one lane and they begin to run in that one lane and no one is qualified because that is the norm. Now, if somebody says that I'm in lane 6 and wants to cover lane 6, by the time they finish, even if they are forced, they become last. Why? Because the lane 6 is wider and bigger than lane 1. And that's exactly what it is. Stop stereotyping God. Let's focus on Him. Let Him speak to us regarding us, regarding you. Let me tell you something. God speaks, apart from, uh, except you are a prophet or a pastor, God speaks to every individual concerning you, yourself. Concerning you. And when God speaks to you concerning you, it is you that he refers to. Now, when Joseph had that dream, he had a dream that God revealed to him about himself. He did not now say it's his brother. No, 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 no. My brother, it is you we are buying down to. No, he knew it was him. And then what did he do? He accepted the dream. He did not interpolate it to somebody else. He did not throw it to somebody else just as um, Esau did to Jacob. Throwing away his birthright. He did not do that. He accepted it. And in the end, 
when it happened, he remembered, ah, I have had this dream. This is a dream I had many years ago, and now it's coming to pass. I pray that as you begin to have an open mind, God himself will uphold you and I, and we will leave the one-way lane, one-way traffic, one-way solution lane, and believe God for diversity. Our God is a diverse God, and we believe, somebody say, I'm believing God for diversity. I am believing God for diversity. The tap it out, diversity, the Lord of diversity will show you the way and reveal to you the way and reveal to you the things you're supposed to do and you shall do it and conquer and deliver and God himself will set you free in the name of Jesus. No more one-way travel. Father, we thank you, we bless you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. Marvelous King, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. My Father, we have heard your word about one way traffic, Lord. Open our understanding so that, Lord, we can rightly focus on you, believing you to show us the way for the right direction. We know you have different paths to right direction, Lord. Show us our own individually and let us begin to walk in the right direction. And let your name be glorified. Let your name be honored. Let this word transform and change our lives. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Before I, I say anything, else, if you are out there, you are not born again yet, you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to just say this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I'm a sinner. And I cannot save myself. I am sorry for all my sins. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me with your blood. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and be my Lord. Give me your Holy Spirit to empower me and save me, Lord, from the devil. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name. If you have just said this prayer, guess what? We are born again. That's our church address on the screen. We are invited to church this Sunday at 10 a.m. Make sure you come and you'll be blessed mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just as I finished just now, I saw three wedding gowns. Three wedding gowns. Three wedding gowns. If you are believing God for marriage, just say, I, I, I claim my wedding gown. I claim my wedding gown. I see three wedding gowns just now. Just If that is you, just have that. I claim my own wedding gown. And God will make it. That's the church address. Write it down. And this Sunday at 10 a.m., make sure you come. And God will bless you mightily and marvelously in the name of of Jesus. The God we are serving is a mighty God. Before we go, please, we want you to like our Facebook page, love our Facebook page, uh, follow our Facebook page, and share the Facebook page. Thank you for those who are liking this page, this program and share. But guess what? The liking and sharing is not the same as liking or following the page itself. The page itself is Body of Christ Christian Center. So when we finish, go on our page and then press like or press follow, or press like and follow, double, press like and follow. We have sent invites to people out there to like the Facebook page, and we can still see that many of you have not liked it yet. So please check your notification, and check Board of Christ Center sends you an invite to like their page. Click on it, like and follow, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. So let's, and also, when you open our Facebook page, it, there's a portion that tells you, invite your friends. So begin to invite your friends on on our Facebook page to like it and follow it and God will bless you. That is the assignment we have given you. Please, from now till next week, next Tuesday, I want to come back and say that thank you all those who have sent invites out to your friends. So please, that's our assignment between now and next Tuesday. Invite your friends to like our Facebook page. Invite your friends to follow our Facebook page and God himself will bless, increase and prosper. And also on YouTube, that's our YouTube um, address. Please, very, very important to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is it. So we have, I checked it before I can take 89. 89, we said we wanted to hit 100 before the end of August. I know you can still do it. So let's also, those who are on Facebook, YouTube, please subscribe to it. Before you leave, subscribe to it. And then also press the notification button. Once you subscribe to it, press it. That whenever we are coming, you can get a notification that we are on by God's grace. So that is it. Do that. Please, and all those on YouTube also, please invite your friends. I know that many of you have channels and you have friends who have subscribed to your channel. Please let them subscribe to, to BOCM1 TV channel and God will bless you and bless everyone in Jesus' name. And don't forget our regular online programs. Our regular online programs every Wednesday. That's tomorrow by the grace of God. We have 
interactive Bible study. Pastor Fungan and myself, by the grace of God, every Wednesday at 7 p.m., make sure you join. Our Bible study is interactive. You can ask questions, you can interact, you can iron, sharpen it, iron, and God will bless you. So make sure you are part of this tomorrow at 7 p.m. God will bless you. And don't forget that uh, we have Corpus Forum every Sunday at 8 p.m. Corpus Forum every Sunday at 8 p.m. God will bless, increase, and prosper you in Jesus. And then my dear wife, Pastor Fungan, the apostle of Hear my cry. You know, every she does is hear my cry. She's the apostle of hear my cry. Every Sunday she's here, 6 a.m. Every Monday she's here, 11 p.m. Yesterday was very powerful. If you missed, go and watch it again and God will bless you. And then Wednesday she's back. Tomorrow, tomorrow is Wednesday. Yes, tomorrow, 1 p.m. Make sure you join and God will bless you. I tell you, your life shall never remain the same again. And also we have um, um, prophetic hour every Tuesday at 9 p.m. And then breakthrough uh, prayers every Thursday at 9 p.m. Make sure you join and God will bless everybody in the name of Once again, thank you for joining. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. You will continue to arise and shine, succeed, and make it in the name of Jesus. The Lord Himself will grant you your heart desire. And don't forget, before I go, don't forget we have a program this Friday. Friday coming, you know, you're doing five Fridays. This Friday is prayer against every form of sickness. So if you know anyone who is sick, 10 p.m. this Friday, just for 30 minutes, 10 p.m. this Friday, 10 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. UK time. Just And when you're coming, please come with your olive oil. Everyone who comes who is sick in that part of the body, there will be, it will be prophetic and declaration for healing, instant healing. So make sure you come this Friday, 10 to 10.30 p.m., just 30 minutes, and God will bless in Christ. But once again, thank you very much, everybody, for joining. God will bless in Christ. Plus, we do appreciate you. And the Lord will honor you. He will grant you all your heart desire in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that you are blessed. Whatever has made you sad, I declare the Lord will turn it around and will turn to your happiness. I declare and decree you shall be favored. There shall be no limitation. That evil hand who has placed a limit on your destiny, I cut it off by fire. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree begin to make progress and move forward. You are going higher. You are going higher. If you believe that habit, I am going higher. You are going higher. Every limitation is broken and destroyed. I am going higher. I am going higher. And as you tap it out, we are going higher and higher. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Thank you, all the men and women of God who have joined my dear wife, Pastor Funke, the Apostle of Hamaka. Thanks for joining. God will bless you. Pastor Shogo, thank you for joining. I think I saw you. Pastor Falakati, thank you for joining. Pastor Chichi, thanks for joining. God will bless, increase, and prosper you. We really appreciate you. And God will bless you all in Jesus' name. Pastor Mike too, God will bless you. We do appreciate you all. And, God will, and every man and woman of God who has joined, everyone who has joined, who made a comment, we really appreciate you. God will bless in Christ and prosper. And those on Facebook too, thank you, thank you very much. I can see all your your comments. God will bless you. And also on YouTube, God will, on Facebook, God will bless in Christ and prosper. Until we see again tomorrow at 7 p.m. But don't forget, 1 p.m., hear my cry, and God will bless you. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. You are blessed and highly favored. Good night and bye-bye.